Do you ever think about how things could be different? Imagine a society made up of free individuals, making conscious, informed decisions, peacefully cooperating and organizing for mutual benefit, empowered by a culture that inspires action, focused on solutions, looking to the future, while not forgetting the past. Think about it. We're convinced that, with the right tools, this is possible. Project Deimos, co-creating an empowering platform. The Deimos community is proud to present Project Deimos. Project Deimos, Deimos meaning people, is about freedom and empowerment through technology. We know there's a much more efficient way to communicate, organize and co-create on a worldwide basis and therefore believe the time has come to update societal organization to contemporary possibilities. The Deimos community works to create an all-encompassing, transparent, and user-friendly platform for efficient communication, cooperation, and co-creation. We strive to empower people to be able to contribute peacefully and proactively to societal transformation in the comfort of a safe online environment with the look and feel of a game. The Deimos platform combines communication and social networking, problem solution management and co-creation, grassroots organization, which is natural and spontaneous bottom-up organization, upward control, which is the influence an individual has on public discourse, engagement characters, delegation and economics into one single interface, which revolves around three main elements, Deimos, meaning people, the Agora, meaning central spot or gathering place, and the arena, meaning open theater. In addition to familiar social network functionality, the Deimos platform will improve the way people handle and share information, cooperate and act by facilitating a solution-oriented environment focused on researching topics and possibilities, identifying problems, generating and implementing solutions, and finding a common ground. Make it easy for people to organize their community, manage their business, and set up grassroots initiatives by providing them with a structured working space to start and manage projects. Enhance the individual position and collective influence by enabling people to delegate their support to others, thereby creating a network of expertise and influence, and track and reflect on public delegates and discourse, state office holders and finance in real time. Accommodate exchange of property and services in a decentralized market with integrated cryptocurrency in an effort to stimulate local economy. Offer an overview of all public interaction on local aggregate pages and the total aggregate front page, which serve as customizable newspapers or magazines and can be filtered according to personal parameters and presets to give a unique insight into human action. In order to safeguard success and sustainability, to guarantee transparency and privacy, the platform will be built on an open source, encrypted and decentralized framework. This means that the system will not require a central authority, server or service to remain operational. We sincerely invite everyone to join the Deimos community and are looking to strengthen our team with dedicated enthusiasts. You can contribute to the project by creating an account on our website, sharing and reflecting on ideas on the integrated forum and social network, and keeping track of our blog and social media. We're working in our free time on a minimal budget, so any and all contributions to make the project a success are greatly appreciated. Thank you for your time. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows user modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on TheSeedsOfLiberty.com and TheConsciousResistance.com. 
So the Peace Fanaticism is covered by the Bibcut No Government License. This allows for reuse uh, for, by anyone other than government and the agents thereof. You can find out more at bibcut.org. So today we have Roman Van Rie, who's coming in from Amsterdam. He's a volunteerist, anarchist, agorist, and co-founder of Project Demos and Statism Exposed. Uh, and also he's working on another project called Holon, which is a, uh, is a hardware system that's linked to Project Demos with self-sustainability uh, in part by using um, aquaponics and, uh, and also other, other forms of uh, sustainable methods. Uh, and you can find out more about that, uh, more about Project Demos on projectdemos.net. Um, and on Facebook, you can find him. His personal profile is Roman Van Rie. And his uh, Facebook pages are Project Demos. And he's also an admin on the Vir Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, and also his very new page, um, Agorist Singularity. So, so we're going to discuss a little bit about his history of uh, how he came to volunteerism. And also he used to work in uh, We Are Change, um, the Amsterdam um, branch of that. Um, and also, so yeah, so we're talking about his project demos. What's that all about? Statism exposed. Hold on, and this uh, interesting new uh, creation, Agris Singularity. So, as you can see, he's just been sitting on his butt doing nothing, being unproductive <laughs> and lazy. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> so, Roman, thanks a lot for coming to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, I've seen you uh, a lot on uh, Vir Voluntary Virtue Network posting. I'm like, who is this guy, you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, he turned out to be a really cool guy, and uh, as, as most volunteers are. And you're into a lot of cool stuff that I think um, people should uh, should know about. So so before we get into all that cool stuff, um, can you go into a little bit about your history of uh, how you came to this philosophy of volunteerism and you know what books and personalities influenced you? Sure. Um I think from an early age, um, my family was already very, very much freedom oriented. My my grandfather was a, a psychiatrist who um, did research with uh, LSD in like the 70s, mm. give or take. Um, so quite controversial figure. Uh, my cousin inspired me greatly. Um, He's an anarchist as well, although more of the anti-capitalist persuasion. Uh, I mean, uh, when, when we get down to the semantics of it all, I, I think we're quite aligned. I mean, it's just you know, you get you get the point. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, capitalism means one thing to one person and right. another thing to another, unfortunately. But right. um, yeah, I think I think one of the main uh, the the biggest moments growing up was. Uh, when he was arrested and he refused to cooperate and that I think he because he kept silent and he refused to identify himself they locked him up they held him for like a month or two or something like that and that really that that was really something that was yeah that stuck with me mm. moving on from there I, I had a couple of run-ins well uh, multiple run-ins with the law quote-unquote um hmm. uh, that also strengthened this anti authoritarian uh feeling that I had uh in, in school as well before that. Um and then eventually I, I ran into uh Luke Radowski's work, We Are Changed, as you mentioned it. Um and just uh from there just did some video work ran into uh, or bumped into Adam Kokesh on the internet and that's really where I was introduced to voluntarism and agorism and economics. I think another uh, key turning point was uh, where Adam Kokesh, I think he mentioned uh, one of uh, Rothbard's quotes where Rothbard goes on, uh, what does he say again? It's not a crime to be ignorant of economics well, you're all you're all familiar with this quote. I'm oh yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's no crime to be ignorant of economics, but to have a, a loud and vociferous opinion while um, remaining, remaining in that state of ignorance is unforgivable. Something like that. Something like that, indeed. <laughs> um, and that that was really the moment where I was okay. I have a, I have a loud and vociferous opinion on the topic, <laughs> but I never read any economics books, so that's where I dove into all the 
theoretical stuff, and now we're here. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, so, what kinds of books? Uh, can you mention some names of some of the books that really influence you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Although I think most of it, it only strengthened oh. my, you know. The, so, you, so you already had these ideas in place, and it just, it just like, indeed, re- reinforced I, them. I think the the most essential one was uh, uh, um, human action. Oh, okay. Which took me quite some time to work my way through. That's the that's the huge like Bible type book, right? <laughs> yeah, the nine hundred over nine hundred wow. page uh, <laughs> from Mises. Yeah. You started with that yeah. one? Oh my god. Oh no, no, that was not the first one. No, oh, the, okay. I think the first one was Economics in One Lesson. Nice, nice. Good one. Which yeah was also a very good in terms of praxeology, that was also an eye opener. Mm-hmm. But um human action took that a lot further. Mm-hmm. And along the way, you know, some Ayn Rand, some, um, of course, Mary Rothbard, Larkin Rose. Although Larkin Rose is less theoretically economic, I think. I don't know. I would say, yeah. Yeah, his book is more, I guess, um, uh, specifically about the belief in authority. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, statism in general. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, yeah, the economics books, yeah, yeah. Uh, economics One Lesson. Uh, was great and um, the law by Frederick Bastiat was pretty cool. And, oh yeah, Indeed. And, and anatomy of the, like like yeah, I read a bunch of Rothbard's Anatomy of the State. What has government done to our money? The case for the hundred percent gold dollar, um, and then uh, and then some of Walter Block uh, is uh, defending the undefendables. Ah, uh, you read that? Have you heard about that one? Yeah, yeah, I have it on my phone. Yeah, I I, I, got, I got through like half of it. I I, I should finish it, but um, <laughs> it's just funny. I love that book because it's so. Uh, how do you say this? Um, um, he just doesn't care <laughs> that <laughs> that he's defending all of these scorned and maligned um, groups of people, like prostitutes, like slum lords, like pimps, like scap. What do you call it? scalpers? Uh, like <laughs> you know, what, what is that? Scalpers. Scalp, scalpers is like people or scap, uh, sc- uh, scalpers or scalpers. I mean, <laughs> it's like people who buy tickets to like let's say a big concert, uh, and they buy it way in advance so that the t- the price is low, and then they wait until the time you know right before the concert, and then they raise yeah, the price, yeah, yeah. and then they make a lot of money. So people hate them, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess supply and demand, right? Yeah, yeah, they take <laughs> taking, taking advantage of. Uh, of supply and demand, basically, like people want yeah. people want to go. So let me. I mean, they're just smart. That's it. I guess you could say agorist. They're like they see an opportunity and they just take it. I guess. I guess. But I'll, although I I can see like on an emotional level why people <laughs> would, you know, I, judge that as a dick move. But, I know. I know. Yeah. But you know what they see is like if they if they see that this this particular band or singer is popular and they're like you know what I can make some money here, why not? <laughs> you know, for me it's like. It's like that's what, for me. That's kind of what agorism is. Is like, is like seeing opportunities to make to make money. And I mean, especially of course outside of state influence, right? That's mm-hmm. that's also how I describe yeah. agorism to people. Is like you know raising your kids outside of state, conducting your business outside of state, um, you know, living your life outside of the state, basically. Um, Black tra- markets trading outside of the state. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, yeah, that's my my view of. I mean, do, what do you think about that with with agorism? How, how do you how would you define it? Yeah, I would even go further than than uh, than that. I think I think um, a very important part is also the technological side of it, and mm-hmm. to try and find um, uh, really uh, solutions that contribute to making that easier, like the working outside of the state part of agorism. Mm-hmm. So, because for example, in a world without blockchain technology, without Bitcoin. It was harder to deal with other people uh, without uh, circumventing the state, not without circumventing, but circumventing the yeah. state. Yeah. You know, that made it a lot easier oh, yeah. um, to avoid taxation and all that. So I think if we apply those or, or that, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those but- ideas to. Oh, Bitcoin! Yeah, really changed everything. I mean, it's like yeah. it's like the difference between like uh, snail mail and email. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's it's just funny. I I, I learned about Bitcoin from Stefan Molyneux, and I saw a bunch of his videos, 
and um, and it really made sense to me. You know, it was a pretty cool mm-hmm. um, idea. And, uh, and 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 it's not for me. It's not. It's not even just about Bitcoin. It's about it's about you know whatever the market decides, right? And and it's about cryptocurrency in general. I mean, Bitcoin for for you know for now basically seems like the most dominant. But maybe in a few years it won't be. Maybe there's going to be something better, and the market's going to you know uh, be attracted to that, right? Because entrepreneurs. The beautiful thing about Bitcoin is that entrepreneurs are not forced to use it, right? They are. Um, they want to use it because it's so cool. It's so attractive. It's so efficient. And and um, you know why are you gonna why are you gonna transact with people where you know the state takes a cut or you know some other third party takes a cut when you can just like go direct. <laughs> right. Although I do have to say um, I don't want to discourage any of your viewers. I think I say go for it, of course, but um, be careful because of course with with this freedom. Also comes responsibility, and I, I, I felt that I, I had to experience that myself. I I lost over five and a half thousand euros in crypto wow. on uh, on yeah on Cripsy, which is really shitty. They just up and disappeared. Just on Cripsy, Cripsy, yeah. And I, I just read this article. It was an exchange, but it's just it went to shit. Is that on the dark yeah. net? Or is that- no, no, it was just it was just the website, wow. Cripsy.com. and I just read this uh, worrying article. I don't want to spread, uh, yeah, I say this. I don't, I don't want to panic yeah. any of your viewers who exchange there. I just read this one article, so if you're on this exchange, go research it before you panic. If you hear me say this, but um, Poloniex, I think, is the name. Mm-hmm. They were also running into some troubles and. I don't know. It's it's still a, it's still a fresh or a young market, you know. It's a it's developing thing, and it needs to. I've I've, yeah. inter- I've interviewed quite a few um, Bitcoin experts, um, and you know the way they describe that, like Mount Gox, for example, right? And yeah. and the Silk Road, and you know that I, I never heard of that one, but um, but the way they the way they say it is like if you have your money, your, your let's say you have your currency in a bank. And then the bank gets robbed, and they they steal your money. Do you blame the, your currency, or do you blame the bank for not having ha- oh. not, not having sufficient um, um, you know security, right? So so basically, what they say is, you know, it's not the fault of Bitcoin that this stuff happens. You know, it's really um, it's it's really um, it's leaving it in a place that's unsecure, insecure, right? Yeah, yeah. So, no, I'm, I'm not criticizing crypto, yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that's impo- it's important to point that out for people, yeah. viewers who, who are confused about that. Yeah, it's it's the exchanges that right. are still... Right. Uh, that whole... I'm, I'm not so sure. If, if that doesn't um, develop quickly, you know, it's not... A lot of people are still better off... Um, Putting their money in a bank, unfortunately, well, you know. Well, 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 as opposed to like those exchanges, which I, I assume you those people can can leave their their Bitcoin at the on the website at the exchange, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay so so instead of doing that, um, uh, you know, I, I've heard it recommended that you instead you you leave you store your Bitcoin on your personal you know device or on your personal computer, you know, mm-hmm. so it's local, so it's not on some website yeah. somewhere, right? That's that's an option, of course, yeah. But still, I mean, if you um, if you look at, uh, for example, credit card fraud. Mm. If if uh, I w- if I wake up tomorrow and there's like uh, what five thousand euros missing from my credit card, and mm-hmm. someone across the world uh, used it because they they got to my uh, information. Mm-hmm. I can just call Visa or Master, Mastercard and ask them, or you know, tell them like this: I didn't spend this. Give right. me back my money. They're right. insured. Right, you know? right, right, right. There, there's, there's enough. So I'm not, I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not supporting those <laughs> organizations, but I'm just saying there's some, some improvement still that has to be. Yeah, yeah. That that, you know? that that's that security is not there yet, um, and it's a it's an infant technology. You know, it's still developing. Um, but I think in, in so many ways, it's just awesome. Like, like I, I remember there was somebody made a meme comparing, um, the cost that it takes to send money, you know, um, you know, across, you know, across the ocean through what's the Western union, 
right? As compared to Bitcoin <laughs> and Western Union, besides all the paperwork, it's like, I don't know, 5% or 10%, right? And then Bitcoin, Insane. and then Bitcoin is like <laughs> a, a, a fraction of a percent or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, on, on, on big, uh, transactions. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So, but still, I think ultimately, and this is why I think, uh, the focus on, on self sustainability, uh, ultimately is more important because I can't eat money. Mm. You know, I can't, I can't drink money. I can't live mm. on money alone. Mm. There need to be resources. Right, right. And, you know, those resources, the money needs to be consciously invested in, in solutions that really work mm -hmm. to free people from, even from work. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I have nothing against work. I have nothing against money. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, in a world where people don't have to work to survive, yeah, that would be very beneficial to freedom in general, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think when you say that, um, a lot of people might interpret that as being like, you know, you're, you're a supporter of the, uh, you know, the Zeitgeist Venus Project, you know, where machines, machines control everything and we don't, we, human beings don't have to do anything and machines can decide, you know, how much beans you eat in the morning and what types of shoes you should wear and <laughs> you oh, know, no, but ro I, robot communism and all that stuff. <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. Um, this is worth mentioning, though. I was greatly influenced by the Venus Project, uh, Jacques Fresco and, and his work. But um, I don't necessarily think that their ideas need to be enforced. I think um, a lot of their... Uh, of course, the economics, it sucks. I'm, don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I understand that now, but uh, their vision, their ideals of, of trying to, you can, let me put it this way. You can, you can strive for their ideals in a top down manner and a grassroots manner. And I think right. approaching that from a bottom up grassroots uh, way is, is really Good. Did, did you see? Did you see all the, all three movies, the the Zeitgeist movies? I think I did, but it's a long time ago. It's like years. Yeah, I probably saw them like yeah, probably like five years ago, uh, something like that. Six years ago, maybe. Um, and I did gain some insight from them, like um, you know, learning about the creation of of money, you know, the creation of currency, Federal Reserve, central banking, um, mm -hmm. you know, corruption of politics, and all this kind of stuff. Um, but, um, but yeah, it, it generally has a sort of communist or socialist type flavor to it. Um, but you know, like, like they criticized the drug war, you know, they had on, uh, Dr. Gabor Mate and, uh, yeah. and, and so, you know, they really had a lot of awesome information. So I give them credit for that, you know, for, for educating people about those things in a very engaging way. Uh, but then, you know, when they come across the solutions, you know, <laughs> it's kind of difficult to swallow now. Like at that time, I'm like, all right, it yeah. makes sense. Before I studied actually economics like you, like you said, uh, it makes sense. But then once you do study, you're like, wait a minute. What about the cal yeah. calculation problem? How are these yeah. robots going to know? <laughs> get rid of money. Get yeah. rid of markets, whatever the fuck that may mean. Pardon my language. Pardon yeah. my French. But, yeah. yeah. So... Um, so yeah, so it's, it's it's a good stepping stone. Um, you know, unfortunately, some people stay there, <laughs> but um, and, and they're interesting to talk to those, those kinds of people. But um, but yeah, you're you're right. I mean, if if there are communities that develop like that, um, you know, maybe stateless societies that develop like that. I don't know, somehow with machines controlling everything, and if they can make that work, go ahead. Sure, that sounds fine. But uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not I'm not afraid of um, you know, machines like. You know, like like you know, people have this idea that machines are stealing our jobs. You know, so so you got you got the zeitgeisters that are like machines should do everything, and then you got then you got the luddite <laughs> the luddite fallacy people that are like destroy all technology. Technology is stealing my jobs. Yeah, it's the robots. Well, but, but there's it's not all nonsense though. And yet again, I don't get me wrong, but um, I'm with you. You know, we need to we need to embrace this technological innovation and these developments, but. At the same time, if we don't also uh, direct our, uh, if we don't invest our resources 
in the right yeah right i know i'm not telling people what to do but what i think <laughs> is right <laughs> the right technology right. like focused on self sustainability i think there's a chance that there are going to be a lot of people who are going to be dependent uh-huh. on welfare type structures and right. you know handouts there's one of the things that bugs me a lot lately when i see um very smart people generally smart people who are really you know, like developers, for example, a lot of people in the tech community are pro basic income that I also used to support at some point. Right. Like the, yeah, let's just forget about them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we, hey, we all have our sins that we can confess to. I voted for Obama in 2008. All right. So we all got our sins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all gotta, yeah. <laughs> I, I used to advocate. I, I used to think banning GMOs would be a good thing. So there you go. <laughs> Don't make mistakes. As long as we acknowledge them and learn from them, you know? and move on. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah. <laughs> but then, if you, I think, I think that's a very scary trend that you see. Then, then that all these very smart intellectual people that they all support, or a, a vast majority of them, it seems to me support this idea of basic income because they simply don't see that there's another way mm. to deal with this problem mm. that I really think does exist. Right. Up well, to a certain level at least. Well, I, I could say a lot about the uh, the basic income, but um, I want you to <laughs> tell the listeners about your project. So project demo. So let's start off with that and then we'll right. move on to the other ones. Okay. So, well, we can we can tie this in with uh, with what we're talking about just now, of course. So, I think um, to be able to live outside of the state and do so effectively, um, there's some things that need to be taken care of. If you look at uh, what the government is, or at least in the minds of uh, the average person of uh, people, you know. Uh, as what it is perceived, it's an institution that is uh, responsible, yet again, supposedly, for societal organization, mm. right? It takes on the roles of, of really organizing society, the tasks, um, and to be able to do so effectively, we need, because we, we, we're living with so many people crammed together, uh, we need some technology to organize, to really facilitate that. Uh, so I sat down with a friend of mine, Stan Fortas, who is the co-founder of this project, Project Demos. And yeah, we got to uh, work on a concept for a platform that would facilitate this, that would fill this, uh, this uh, gap, or how do you say that? Bridge this gap. Mm-hmm. Um, so... To get into uh, the specifics, we developed a new chat, an innovative chat structure that really doesn't exist right now. It's it's really new. Um, at least we we haven't we haven't come across anything that even looks like it. What we did was analyze basic structure of discussion or conversation, purposeful discussion or or conversation, especially in terms of uh, resource management. Um, and we came to the conclusion that every conversation really starts out with either a question or a statement or a combination of those. Um, so in our chat that we call a quest, you, you start out with a question or a statement and that you can um, support with arguments, uh, rebuttal solutions, sources, etc. And every component of this initial statement or question can be highlighted. So you type up a question or a statement and then you type out the arguments and then you highlight those and then you click the corresponding buttons that really, and that, uh, that way you really structure the text. And when you launch the quest, instead of having just one uh, window or one uh, area that you, um, where the thread, the conversation takes place, every separate component, every different component is grouped and categorized and displayed in different windows around the central chat. So you still have the main thing, um, but then all the different components are 
group around that. So you have one window that displays all the solutions or the answers to the questions. You have one window that displays all the arguments, all the rebuttals, all the sources, etc. And they all reflect on the initial statement or question. And what you're left with then eventually is um, either more questions to research or solutions to implement, solutions to problems to implement. And you can then link those to a uh, task manager and use the social network type structure um, of the platform to um, invite people to join your team to either do the research or uh, um, implement these solutions. Uh, one of the, I think, essential features of this um, platform would be the delegative uh, part. So imagine, well, not imagine, let me, let me, um, if you look at government right now, supposedly the idea is that you delegate um, your right or whatever to a representative, right? They're, they represent you. Mm -hmm. We try to mimic that um, in our platform. So but instead of, of course, having a very, <laughs> the, the, instead of bringing in that coercive element, we focused on the uh, peaceful Wait, so side. You're, of you're saying there's, there's no guns involved in this? What, what's wrong with what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's the fun in that? Okay. <laughs> uh, we, we, which we, we really try to like the essential the essential thing. So um, look at it as, for example. The example that I give often is my dad um, is a researcher in, in the medical uh, industry or medical, how do you say that, medical world. Mm -hmm. He's a professor. I trust him, you know. I could delegate my support to him in terms of health issues. He could do the same for people that he knows and trusts uh, and so on and so forth. And this way, if you do that per topic, uh, you get you're left with this structure of this network of expertise and influence, and it's built on trust. At least, of course, it's just a tool, so people still need to use it properly. Mm -hmm. But there's a potential there that you can then also use that for the projects that you set up. So maybe. Um, to give an example that is uh, <laughs> discussed a lot in these situations, the roads. <laughs> if I, well, let's be honest, it's something. Funnily, I don't, I don't know how, how, but it's still something that people don't understand how to build a road. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complex, it's a complex technological marvel, Roman. It, you, it, you have it, no idea. <laughs> flat surface. It's a flat you know? surface, Roman. Come on. Go so, <laughs> imagine if I if I have a community and I want to build a road there, but I have no idea how to do that. And I know nobody, nobody in the community knows anybody who does construction. I can just go in this on this platform and just look for people in construction. And there you have the whole like pyramid of people at the top, the most skilled and the most trusted people in those in, in construction, and at the, the more you go down, the less support they have behind them that backs them in their expertise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then, of course, the whole thing needs to be tied together by a market. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to sell and buy products and services. And... On top of that, to make it all uh, transparent and, and, and to ex uh, make the data accessible, we thought up the idea of um, the po what we call the polis, P-O-L-I-S, which, uh, which, which we call a, a body of people. So every uh, city or village or community could be a polis, and on this polis, there's a summary of all the activities and all the quests and all the uh, sales, and all the, the market activity, mm -hmm. all the projects, the delegates, um, 
but also, and I think this is a, a very essential part as well, um, an upward control mirror. The upward control mirror is where we still offer, <laughs> I might be hated for this, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> space for the government uh, to offer transparency to their people, their people. Wow. Um, the idea is, imagine if you uh, allow people to subscribe. For example, I live in Amsterdam. Imagine if I could subscribe to the polis of Amsterdam, and then in my upward control mirror, I see what government spends its money on in real time. So we got to try. We want to try and get local governments to use our system to manage their resources so that at the moment someone some politicians okays some subsidy or some uh, bureaucrat spends money on new printers or new computers or uh, like six hundred dollar bottle bottles of whiskey or wine or whatever <laughs> no you get a notification imagine what that would do to people's uh -huh. perception of these crooks right right and if, and i think it's a win-win if you just propose this and you build this, either they have they they take it, they have to use it, or and if they don't, the public will know what's going on. You know, mm -hmm. you tell them like you, I got this perfectly fine system right here. Mm -hmm. You can use to show the people what you're doing, and you don't want to do that. So you expect us to trust you? Well, of course they're, they're going to say, "Well, well, Roman, you're being naive now. This is national security is at stake. You know, we we can't have everything that we do be transparent. <laughs> you you, yeah. you you little you, you little peons uh, can't be knowing what we're doing behind closed doors. It's for your own good." I think I think if you just play on people's emotions, there. If you, one thing I used to uh, I used to say a lot was. Um, you force me to pay for things and I'm not even allowed to know what for. Right. So exactly. I demand that at the very least you right. show me what you spend my money on yeah. at the very least. And I think a lot of people can agree on this. And if you market this idea properly, mm -hmm. I think it could do, uh, do a lot good and a lot of damage to statism. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, it's awesome. It's it's a great idea. Um, you know, they, um, there's a saying that uh, you know one of the best things you can do to bad ideas is expose them to the light, right? <laughs> you know, you never want to you never want to suppress uh, bad ideas because that's just gonna you know um, generate resistance and you know bad energy. So you just let it out. You know, the internet is so wonderful and that this free flow of ideas. Um, you know, the, the bad idea, sure, there's going to be bad ideas, but, you know, they're quickly going to be discovered and, you know, to be inefficient or, or, um, evil or, you know, um, damaging in some way. So the best thing that you can do, like you said, is, is, uh, for, e for wickedness is just to make it transparent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And of, of course, in, um, in, in terms of, uh, effect, uh, how do you say that? Effective, effective. Effectiveness? Eff effectiveness, no. Efficiency. 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 Right. <laughs> um, I think uh, this is also very powerful. Um, instead of having people do research over and over again mm -hmm. for uh, the same problems, you know, there's there's a lot of places in the world <laughs> and they encounter similar problems. And instead of having people doing the research over and over again, mm -hmm. you can now just take an effective solution that someone developed an effective project that someone set up and just copy it. Mm. So I can be in Amsterdam and I want to build the road yet again. <laughs> and instead, <laughs> and instead of uh, maybe someone in, in uh, Berlin or in the U S whatever, any, anywhere, instead of them having to go through that process again, so like, how do I build a road? You know, I just look for the road and mm. projects and then there's, a, a project that's used a lot and you just copy it, get the people to build it and mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, 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 I love the idea. Um so so basically it's like it's like Facebook enhanced. Would you would you say? Indeed. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Although people indeed um 
they said also it's like a social network, but I think social network misses the it's it's not it doesn't describe it. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's it goes beyond social networking. I I coined the term sovereignment way back when I when I was starting into this. Um so instead of having government, it's it's sovereign. Ah, okay. Cool. <laughs> That's that was the idea of thing so Imagine uh, entrepreneurs or, or ideologists could get detailed feedback on uh, ideas or, or the products and the services that they uh, that they deliver. Um, they could crowdsource information and expertise. Um, business owners and employers and employees they can uh, make use of this, of course, in uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer way, um, circumventing government. Um, they can act on uh, reputation capital, which is uh, something that I haven't man uh, mentioned before, but I think uh, is also very helpful. Um, the system would track the things that you do, mm. and depending on whether you do them publicly or not, they are added to your character capital. So <laughs> imagine a uh, ro you ro in a role-playing game, the things you do, they build up your character, right? So you, you gain experience points. And instead of having some fictional game, this refers to actual things that you did in real life. So uh, successful projects that you implemented that got a lot of support, you can see those in your, in your uh, reputation capital, your profile. Um, if you're a very good debater or you come up with a lot of good solutions or you know you can all add that to your uh, character capital so uh, employers and, and business owners can make use of that uh, students and scientists and journalists can use this this system to um, do uh, research of course open source and uh, journalism open source uh, science but students can also then open source their um, uh, their processes right now it's really hard to see if uh, students plagiarize their work you know if the, you can just pull something off the internet right just modify it a little and uh, hand it in right and now you can maybe with your work group you're working with like five other students on a project you can just show your entire process that you went through with our quest mm-hmm you can go through the research questions that you set up and the discussions that you had and all that structured. Um, media outlets can also, of course, make use of this. Um, yeah, I guess. Wow. Uh, that's, very that's, very cool. Yeah, I love that. that. Yeah, I love that idea of the character capital, like the reputation. That's, uh, I mean, to me, that's one of the greatest things that keeps... Um, you know, businesses in check in the in the free market. You know, without without appealing to the state, um, like what else will get a business uh, or or help the business to become more successful is uh, reputation, right? And and capital. Can you know? Yeah, that kind of character capital is that, uh, uh, and that that's the best ways that so many free market um, um, you know programs or businesses. Um, function like like ebay like amazon like uber you know all these different um you know um uh, hubs or exchanges or businesses um they function on that ratings and reviews and and stars and you know uh reputation it's so so important and it helps yeah. to weed out you know the good as well as the bad people right yeah yeah definitely so yeah, so it's important to know both, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, so, yeah. So so yeah, so please um, also go into your um, statism exposed and uh, what that's about. Can I? Can I? Can we? Can we first maybe get to uh, to the uh, to the self sufficiency? Uh, oh sure, no problem. Thing? Ahead, yeah, would you mind? No problem. Go ahead. Because because I think it ties in with uh, with the with the uh, project demos with the demos platform. Definitely. Because because ultimately, I think. You know, all the things that I mentioned are, are very interesting, maybe. I don't know. I would say <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, possi the, like the, the potential is, is very interesting. But 
Um, <laughs> don't you feel so alone? <laughs> don't you feel so alone? It's like you're you're in a room of people like. This is interesting stuff. Is anybody in here I- interested in this? Is it just me? Yeah. <laughs> Am I the only one? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's catching on though. There's more and more initiatives that are that are headed in this direction. So sooner or later, one of these initiatives is just going to take off, and it's yeah. But I think um, the most interesting part here is if we focus this technology on self-sufficiency and self-governance. Mm. So creating communities that function entirely outside of the state and state statist institutions and, 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 and companies that are, are yeah, really linked to that system. So if you then um, imagine hardware as the other side of this coin, like this, is, this was all software that I was talking about, and then we move on to hardware, so the self-sufficiency, integrate uh, aquaponic systems, automate them as much as possible. You create a decentralized uh, distributed network of, of, of water collection and purification systems, uh, electricity generators and batteries and, you know, all, all, all of that. And you put it all together. I think that would create a... Um, very, very powerful, empowering tool or tool kit, toolbox mm-hmm. for uh, freedom-loving individuals to uh, really exit statism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, um, I mean, I, I, I support you know all that kind of stuff, right? The um, you know the sustainability and uh, and growing your own farm and growing your own food and you know, as much as possible. And, uh, you know, solar power, wind power and all that. But the thing to me is um, if like right now, solar power and wind power, um, they're at a point where the technology is not good enough for it to be economically efficient. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is why it requires subsidies and it requires um, people or, or the businesses to appeal to the state so that people can actually afford those products. And, and that, to me, is the problem. And, 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 you know, especially like Bernie Sanders, people like Bernie Sanders who, who you know, uh, say that, that they support all these stuff and that the government should come in and subsidize it because, you know, you know this is why we need the government is because, you know, these, these businesses are... Uh, we, we need to get more solar power and wind power, so the government should be there to subsidize it and help it. And so I think uh, people get kind of confused with that um, because it's like if you need to steal money from other people <laughs> to fund your business, then perhaps your business model is not such a good or efficient business model to begin with, right? So I don't so think it, it even deserves that title. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so I mean, I, su- I support all that stuff, but for me right now, the reality is it's not there yet. And maybe, you know, on an individual level, like, you know, you can, you know, you can afford it and you can work on it for your own house. But, but, um, yeah, these, I mean, the, just like, just like, um, you know, let's say in the early, you know, right before the, the 20th century, um, you know, oil wasn't such a big business because the technology just wasn't there to access it. Right. All the oil was yeah. there. But the yeah. technology wasn't there. So it doesn't matter how much money you steal. It doesn't matter how much you subsidize. It's not going to change the fact that the technology is there, right? So so I think, you know, I mean, th- and the technology is developing, though. I think it is getting better and better. It's more becoming more efficient. but um, And cheaper and cheaper every day. And cheaper and cheaper. And so, uh, yeah. but, but, but I think we have to help people divorce themselves of this idea that government needs to be there to help certain businesses because they can't, do it on their own yeah yeah without a doubt definitely um i think it's doable though i think um i was talking to this journalist a while back in in uh, at at an event here in amsterdam and he introduced to me this article i believe it was called what was it I don't, I don't remember, I don't recall, but anyway, the, the idea was that you use um, really uh, capitalism to create um, ideals that would generally be 
associated with communism. So equality and all of that, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think there's there's a point there, though. If you imagine, if you this, so this is what we're working on, on, on uh, in another project um, in Holon. Imagine if you develop a an automated aquaponic system that is modular, that is um, easy, plug and play, uh, you know, accessible to people. It's cheap, uh, 3D printable parts. Make it as accessible as possible. Make it open source so that people can adapt and, and mm. update it. And But there's still a market there. You can still sell it. There's right. still, you know, and there's so much there's so much that comes with that you know education there's resources that need to be sold and 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 yeah and and, and you know this is no i was gonna say this is why i appreciate the wealthy people (laughs) because like when cell phones first came out they were prohibitively expensive right and the only reason or one of the big reasons why the price was pushed way down was because wealthy people wanted to get a hold of this awesome new technology. And so the more that they bought it, the more capital those businessmen had to further develop and create new models that were more efficient and cheaper, right? Yeah. So, so if you can, I mean, I think it seems like you are one of those people that's going to innovate in this field, which is awesome. And if you can find a market for these products and sell them, then that's going to... Um, that's going to encourage and accelerate the process of making them um, more, more economically, um, you know, efficient for other people yeah. to buy. So. Yeah, without a doubt. Although I think in this area, um, efficiency is not the main focus. I think we need um, people come to me and they say, you know what, this idea that you have with this self sustainability, it's it's silly because it's way more efficient to have one big farm. It produces all the food and one store that you buy your stuff at and mm. and one big uh, you know nuclear plant that creates your energy to produce your energy yeah that's all true uh, that's all nice but if it burns down or if it's flooded yeah. or if the government decides that you can't have any anymore right, right, you know right. you're fucked yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we need to distribute all of that it's, sure sure I think the decentralization of society is is an essential part of, yeah. of this the freedom. Yeah, definitely. And um, I mean, I mean, just the fact that um, we have certain areas that we consider public utilities that must be state owned is a big problem, right? Mm. So if there was no state that controlled these sectors, then yeah, there would be many private water companies and many private, you know, electricity providing companies you know and many energy companies uh and uh, and i think that would be a much better world but we don't really have that today and it's hard to imagine what it would be like if we did um but uh but i think you know again just going back to statism in general that's just a <laughs> that's just a symptom of statism right that's why yeah that's why you and i are doing what we do and yeah. uh, and and why mm-hmm. you're you're doing with the with the statism exposed and spreading the larkin rose book right so uh yeah yeah Shall, shall I get on to that? Yeah, definitely. Just, uh, discuss that a little. I, I haven't really formulated the, like, summarized it. We're still working on the concept, and we're, we're, we are working on the website, though. So that's happening. But, like, the description that would be put on the website is not finished, but I'm going to try to explain it as uh, coherently as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought... There are these books such as The Most Dangerous Superstition, but I think um, Adam Kokesh's Freedom also uh, is also very effective and concise, you know, simple. And I mean that as a po- it's positive, right? Yeah. Simple. It's <laughs> easy to read and easy to understand. It's not complicated economic jargon and all that. Oh, yeah. So I thought, how do we get these ideas to as many people as possible? And then first I... I thought, okay, let's record the audiobook for the Dutch translation of The Most Dangerous Superstition. But that was too slow. It was too much work. It's it too ineffective. Mm. So then I thought, let's do something with crowds, crowdfunding um, books and then handing them out. But then if you hand them out, um, 
people maybe read it, maybe they won't, and then they just dump it somewhere, and that's it, and that's where it ends, mm. probably. Right. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times, I don't know. Um, so then I thought, why not set up a website uh, that you can use? You have a you have a profile there, and then you own one book, and the book ownership is linked to your profile. And as soon as you're done, uh, as soon as you're finished with the book, either you read it or you didn't, you can pass it on. And the moment you pass it on, you create an account for another person that has a profile. And in the profile, it says where you live, not, of course, like the exact address because, yeah, privacy and all that. But I mean, the, <laughs> the city. So they can track you down. Exactly. <laughs> We're creating the database. This is the, the list. No. <laughs> no, it's, it's ima- imagine then being able to find a group of people in your city um, that understand these ideas right. very easily you know there's of course there's facebook but i think a website that is really focused on this with some more functionalities of course there's mm-hmm. this is really very simply put but mm-hmm. um yeah Matt, i think one of the uh, essential things that i um, missed right now in the description was uh the handout process so how do we get the books into circulation in the first you know Mm -hmm. maybe i get like a thousand books a Mm -hmm. thousand copies with crowdfunded money how do i get these people how do you get these books to the people initially Mm -hmm. so then i thought i i came i contacted larkin and i told him about this idea and he started writing and he produced this uh audio clip uh i i forgot the name but he had this video contest that he did for this audio clip. I think right. uh, Amanda yeah. Uh, yeah. Rockwitz. Yeah, she did the all she recorded the audio for yeah. it. Yeah, right. Um, the idea was to have audio that people in this you would blast it through a bullhorn in the street. And I think Larkin tried to write it in such a way that every passing person, every person that walked by could pick up like two or three sentences and then immediately be drawn to uh, the audio. So it's not like a large story. Of course, it is in the in the in the broad uh, broadly speaking. But also, all the bits are uh, interesting or catchy enough in and of themselves. So mm-hmm. every couple of sentences is like a small bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if people are interested and they come up to you, you tell them a little bit about the project. Maybe you have a sign there that explains it in like a couple of sentences. Mm-hmm. Then you hand them the book, hand them over the book. And that's the idea. So, so I assume the uh, the guy with the bullhorn would be right next to the guy who's uh, who's telling people that Jesus is the answer and that you know we're all going to be dead <laughs> if we don't if we don't follow Jesus. Is that you going to be next to that guy? Or? <laughs> well, it's, it's funny that you put it that way. I I I was planning. I am planning. I'm. I still want to do this, of course. Um, on doing this on Dam Square in Amsterdam. Dam Square is the square that the royal palace is next to really nice so that would, that would, exactly so i thought that would be fun <laughs> you know cool but right there there's also a lot of uh indeed these people who are just standing there <laughs> like, preaching but also like people dressed up for pictures you know with tourists and oh, all that I see, I see. But, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that yeah that book um the most dangerous superstition yeah that was a great book um as very um very pivotal in the way I saw uh, statism and the belief in authority, and it really solidified in me why the belief in authority is illegitimate. And uh, you know, he had great description of the Milgram, Stanley Milgram experiments. Um, and then there was another. Uh, I forget the the pri- I forget what it was called. The other experiment, the prison experiment. Stanford. Where, oh, Stanford, Stanford, Stanford experiment. experiment. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> yeah, those two experiments are just just amazing in in, in 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 you know when you realize how you know regular decent people who consider themselves to be moral good people can do horrific things when they feel like there's an authority figure that's taking the blame for it. Yeah. You know, 
and yeah. and people can do that and absolve themselves of responsibility and it's just so uh, they think yeah it's almost yeah. it's almost scary the way that happens you know and uh and, and then when you tell people that you know well actually uh you know the ss soldiers from um from nazi germany had the same um the same reasoning you know i was yeah. just i was just doing doing my job following orders you know don't blame me blame the next guy <laughs> yeah 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 and it's not an it's not a cop out or it is it's a, yeah trying to cop out or huh? yeah <laughs> yeah is that the way you say it yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's just a cop out yeah basically like yeah. uh and and you know the, the question i like to ask is is you know from the guy at the top let's say obama to the mm -hmm. guy all the way at the bottom who's in the Middle East and is kicking down doors and is murdering people and detaining people, who is to blame, right? Who is to blame in that whole chain of command from Obama down to the foot soldier, right? And, um, I mean, I think everyone is to blame, although mm -hmm. perhaps the man who is actually, who's actually carrying out those orders yeah. carries a little bit more. But yeah, yeah, Mark. I think Mark Basio is excellent here. Uh, you know Mark Basio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has this. He has this. Uh, a little clip of him of one of his uh, talks where he talks about uh, the culpable. Who is more culpable? Right. The policeman who really manifests the evil, mm -hmm. the violence, mm -hmm. the, the aggression, or the the politician. And it's not to say that indeed the politician is blameless, you know. Yeah. But who's more culpable? It, the politician is just uttering words, really. You know, it's just tells people to do stuff. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and what's helpful to realize, and this is also something that Larkin Rose really uh, helped me understand, is that is that power is an illusion, right? And the only reason that we think that these people have power is because we give them power <laughs> by our attention by our participation by our tax yeah. dollars we give them power right so people are like you know people are like well you can you can hate the government you can hate the politicians and the laws and the police all you want and uh, you know but then there's always going to be somebody who's going to come to power right and so they, they just think like like there's always going to be this thing that power is there and somebody's going to use it but um, you know you have to realize where does power come from right Power is not just this ethereal thing. Power is given by those people yeah. who participate in the whole thing, who give it credence, right? So, so the regular taxpayer uh, in Nazi Germany who who didn't want to make waves, who was just feeding his family, and just wanted to work and mind his own business, he helped the Nazi regime carry out all those atrocities by his passive participation. Yeah, what what did he say? I uh, I made this meme that went crazy viral of uh, of exactly this that Larkin Rose he he said, what was it? I'm not afraid of the yeah. Stalin's and the Mao's and the right. Hitler's. Right, right. You know, I don't. Yeah, I'm afraid. I don't of, recall the rest. Yeah, of I'm, it, I'm, but, I'm afraid of the millions of uh, you know obedient. You know, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People who, who carry are... out their orders and pay for their empires. Right. I'm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not afraid of some loony with a mustache because he's not a threat if the people don't believe in authority. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, it, and it's yeah. so true. And and you know we blame you know the wars and the drone strikes on Obama. You know it's like it's all <laughs> his fault. That's why yeah, it's happening. Yeah. It's all his fault. And, and we're like, no, actually, <laughs> most of the bureaucrats and the underlings, it, it's their fault. But then it's also the people that empower them through their through their attention and participation. Yeah. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's why this, this book is really awesome and uh, it was a great read. I really enjoyed it. And so, yeah, I think this is a great, it's another great project that you're doing, um, among others. <laughs> so, so before we go, please um, uh, talk about your uh, agorist singularity and what you plan to do with that. All right. Yeah. Um, Initially, we wanted to uh, do. We're still going to do it, but it doesn't. It's not happening quickly enough for us. We wanted to interview people for project demos who are also working on similar initiatives. So, uh, uh, solutions and technological innovation that contribute to furthering this cause of agorism, to really enabling people to practice agorism. Um, but then, uh, yeah, it wasn't. 
we yeah it was just too slow we couldn't get enough interviews going uh, so then i thought you know what i'm just going to do it myself i'm just going to create the videos myself i'm going to do the research i'm going to write the episodes and i'm going to i'm going to record myself talking about these solutions so the idea is that i'm going to i'm i'm writing the episodes already i got a list of of things of topics that i want to discuss um so primarily focused on on techno technological innovation but um, sometimes some philosophical ideas or or just yeah anything really that that furthers uh, agorism uh, or or relates to agorism in any way uh, videos are like five to ten minutes maybe uh, yeah to to as I uh, described it on on the Facebook page to broaden horizons and uh, educate people about uh, peaceful and alternative more effective alternatives to statism so yeah another project right there see that you're just bursting with new projects all the time man <laughs> you put you put so many people to shame <laughs> well I get <laughs> Yeah, we'll see where it gets. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, so are you are you one of those people that have like all the all these half done projects that you that you started but you never actually like finished or? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I we worked for three years on project demos. Ah, so, right. Yeah. You no, know, it, it continue that and uh, yeah, this this awesome. act, the aquaponic stuff is is getting serious now. That's awesome. It's yeah. still in its infancy, but yeah. And I'm I'm working on on the the website is happening for statism for mm -hmm. the for statism exposed for mm -hmm. for the Lock and Rose book, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I'm writing the episode so it is happening. It's cool. All, it's slow. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know it's really great you're doing what you're doing, and uh, you know hopefully we can get some more people on board uh, that are watching this interview. Uh, so please uh, you know go to his uh, website, go to his Facebook pages. Um, like them and support what he's doing it's really awesome and i assume you um, accept donations for all this stuff we have uh, you can donate to project demos if you go to projectdemos.net project d e m o s dot net uh, if you scroll to the bottom there's a donate section right there uh the rest um not really maybe i should <laughs> <laughs> so what are you yeah. some kind of uh, vo volunteers donald trump you're all self-funded <laughs> I wish, I wish. No, <laughs> unfortunately, no. I still, I still have a day job too. Uh, so yeah. yeah. In addition, and somewhere he finds time to sleep. So <laughs> awesome, uh, awesome conversation, uh, Roman. So, so yeah. So, is there anything else you want to finish up? Like how they can find you? Uh, what's the best place to find you to to learn more? Uh, you can you can uh, reach me at Roman at projectdemos dot net or um, just add me on Facebook. I mean, it's always good to have more liberty-minded individuals, uh, you know, connected. Yeah. So uh, that's that's pretty much my two main uh, main yeah and, media. And and one thing I like to ask all my guests before uh, we finish is, uh, what is your favorite quote of all time? Ah, <laughs> what is my favorite quote? Um, it's Richard Buckminster Fuller, and it pro probably someone already mentioned this one on your show. I don't think so. No, no? maybe not in a while because I don't remember. So <laughs> let me let me. I think I have it right here. Yeah, just to get it correct. <laughs> uh, you you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing the, the existing model obsolete. I think as a. Uh, I w I used to be very angry. I used to really fight, yeah. or at least you know. Yeah fight the existing yeah. system and really want to I think you could describe me at some point as a stereotypical angry anarchist kid you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the stereotypes that you see with the Molotov cocktail I never I never did any of that but yeah. you know what I'm talking about yeah, 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 yeah. and then I, I came across this and it really changed my entire mindset oh, oh you, came you came across the quote that quote, and I think um, there's something similar, a similar quote to this one, and the, yeah, they really changed my mindset. Instead of wanting to break down right, exactly. the system, exactly. try to build something new. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah people always can um, 
criticize, uh, I think, anarchists and voluntarists um, for, you know, hating on uh, the state and politicians and, and uh, laws and police and the military. And they're like, you hate all this stuff. OK, I understand that. But what are you going to replace it with? Yeah. And it, on the one hand, I say, well, I don't have all the answers. I don't know how a voluntary society would work. It's really up to the market. For now, let's just get rid of this one lie called the belief in authority and statism. And after that, I really don't care. So on the one hand, mm -hmm. I feel like that. But on the other hand, um, it's awesome doing what you're doing in that you're actually showing people uh, ways that we can thrive despite the state, right? You know, with mm -hmm. this self-sustainability and with this project demos and, and uh, finding solutions uh, that much quicker to problems. Um, so, so, yeah, so that's, that's really really awesome and i think i think every business person for the most part does that like they they thrive by finding solutions to problems that other people have and they say i have a solution i can make your life easier yeah you know and, and so most for, you know so i guess you can say most business people do that but um <clears throat> but yeah so it's really awesome doing what you're doing and um uh, you know i hope it takes off so we'll see um yeah we'll see <laughs> yeah same here Thank yeah. you very much. No problem. So, yeah, so if anybody wants to donate to my show, uh, you can do so through Bitcoin, uh, PayPal, or Patreon. That's patreon.com slash peacefulanarchism to help me out. Uh, dollar show is all I ask. Um, I uh, love interviewing fascinating people like Roman here, and I would love to do more. Um, and uh, monetary compensation is always encouraged and appreciated, right? As capitalists, we respond to incentives, right? Indeed. <laughs> you want to you see something more of in the world? You vote with your dollars, right? It's the only democracy I support. <clears throat> vote with your dollars. Or you can vote with your feet. But either way, <laughs> vote with your dollars. <laughs> it's called, or your Bitcoin, right? Yeah, <laughs> except Bitcoin. Um, and you can also help me out by, um, by using the Amazon affiliate links on, the, the, uh, on my website, and making your purchases through there, and I get a, uh, a small commission at no extra cost to you helps me helps me do what I do as well. So because uh, you know this is this is I do this in my free time, but free time is never free, right? According to economics, there's always opportunity costs for what we could have been doing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so yeah, Indeed. that's always encouraged. So uh, awesome conversation, Roman. Thank you very much. Um, really appreciate it. So this is um, Peace Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and theseedsofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.